And we are rolling. The Generac truck. <laughs> experience tour. Multi-megawatt parallel solutions. We gotta wait our turn here to get on the truck. The critical loads, N plus two, the N plus two to the critical, and plus one to their whole store, all right? So this, this gas thing is really cool. Um, yeah, I didn't get that. There it is. I want to get to... So there's a seat just down there if you want to sit. <laughs> Look at all this equipment. Well... I don't know. Sorry, I, I want to show this. There's a job in Washington, D.C. All right, it's called the Museum of the Bible. Man, if you can find it, it's, it is the, the screen there. So um, the Museum of the Bible, actually, it, it's a private in a private museum built by the guy that owns Hobby Lobby. And, uh, and they could not fit all the diesel fuel uh, in their site. It was in the middle of D.C., all right, no place for diesel fuel. So they said, let's go natural gas. Right, but we need 3,200 kW natural gas. They put four 400s on above each other, so eight total generators. That's four and four, right? Inserted uh, in the top of the building, and the, the system has been open since uh, November now and working flawlessly. It took us about a day and a half to start it up because when we build these generators in Wisconsin, we're already paralleling. We parallel together first, right, in our in our facility with the controller, right? So the system that gets put on the truck is the system that's going to be installed. Theoretically, if the contractor hooks it up, it should work out of the box. And that's what happens in Museum of Eight 400s, four of them starting in seven seconds, all eight and 12, and putting the load together. So, all right, then it's, it's right. Sorry. Yeah. 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 Well, it's all right. Um, any questions? So is that standby power for them? Yep. Yeah. Um, you can, you know, something else that's growing, uh, the, the expression demand response, DR, they call it. Uh, it's an, the idea that if you have a generator set and you're asked to run it uh, because you might get a, get a check, in other words, you get uh, economic benefit for running your generator set. Why? Because if you can take a bunch of generator sets, run them, and take that amount of KW off the grid, you will you know, potentially have a, a save of grid problem. And so there's an, there's an industry now that is aggregating people's generator sets, all right, into these gigantic amounts of KW, all right? And when they're called, they bring all these generator sets up online together, and they take 20 meg of power off the national grid. Again, ISO, the local ISO here in Pennsylvania says, it's a hot day, I've just lost one of my nuclear power plants, I need to start all these generator sets, right? <clears throat> That has always been kind of popular with diesels, but became non-economical in the last couple of years because diesels, to get clean enough to be legal in that application, had to be the, the most highest tier, the most clean level, tier four they call it, right? Economics is very expensive, and physically large, and complex. Natural gas, however, is already clean enough. All you have to do is send to the EPA, here's our emissions for natural gas, Emergency, non-emergency, same thing. They said, okay, now you are certified for non-emergency application. So if a DR person wants to say, okay, I want to get a natural gas engine anyway, all right, and I'm in an area where I'm going to get a check for $2,000, $10,000 just for being available, not even using, just for being available, they're starting to look at that. Right? And we're starting to see that grow as the knowledge becomes available. Uh, again, diesel, they could use a diesel, but the numbers are so high but our gas all of a sudden looks very affordable, and it's already certified. So um, gas, for a variety of reasons, and that's just one of them, is become popular. The other reason the gas is driving diesel fuel. Getting diesel fuel in Hurricane Sandy was terrible. People ran out, they couldn't get more of it, all right? Because once you're out, you're out. Mm -hmm. Unless you have a plan somewhere, storing lots of diesel. Sure, I can store 20 days of diesel fuel. That sounds like solve the problem, right? Well, 
what happens to that diesel fuel over time is that it degrades. We don't put these uh, sulfur diesel fuel with low sulfur fuel is what we're required to do. So the fuel in, in these base tanks is good for about six months or a year before somebody better be looking at it, testing and making sure there's no water and gunk, all that stuff. Okay? Hi. See you. Thanks. Congratulations. Um, so, uh, so, again, diesel fuel has to be maintained. The good news is that people like Kistler here, their service department, will once a year go out and test the fuel, water in it, gunk, whatever, all right? And if they need to, they will do a dialysis. They call it polishing. They'll actually pull the fuel out, clean it and filter it, and put it back in again for a couple bucks a gallon, all right? But if you're not doing that, two or three years, your engine's probably not going to start because the sulfur's gone, that preservative's gone, the problem. So again, when people say, I could have a crappy diesel fuel, or I could have natural gas, they're looking at natural gas. Thanks for coming out, Debbie. Yeah. So for all these reasons, we're, we're driving more natural gas possibilities in the market, uh, affordable performance, and at the very moment, the diesel's kind of getting a black eye because of the inability to store lots of it right. and get it if you need it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, beyond that, any questions about uh, generac or generators in general? Things you'd like to know? How about your home generators? Uh, yeah, they fully automatic and come on automatic. Yes, they do. Yep, they're just like these big ones here. They, uh, they, uh, there's, there's sense loss of voltage from utility, and they start, you know, I believe, like uh, 12 or 15 seconds. And they run, um, they run the life. You know, they're designed to run 20 days if they need to. And they're only natural gas. Yes, with propane too. Yeah, I mean, I have a propane unit in Maryland. It, it runs just fine. It's just if you have natural gas, you want to be on natural gas. Then we don't worry about the lack of fuel. But um, yeah, it's uh, where we eight, we build eight out of ten generators, home generators sold in the country. Uh, we are just, we're 80 percent market share in there. And we, we invented the idea of a home generator mm -hmm. back in the late 1980s. That's how long we've been doing this. So a lot of us know us for that because you see us on our commercials. Um, and there's, if you look at the yellow pages, there's a million dealers selling that product. All right, they sell Generac, uh, but there's only one industrial gentleman. It's the R.L. Kistler people. So they are responsible for our industrial product. They have the parts, the service tax. They have the whole infrastructure. It's their responsibility. They have upstate New York, Buffalo, all of you're going to hear some clicks. One of them is going to be that contact. Alright, they're starting up the generator. Gotcha, Ken. You know, I'm saying, I'm like, I'm telling you, Don, that's already done. Is this one going to do anything? No. Okay. For sure. Two contactors feeding a distribution bus. Alright. First one online, I think it was that Bob Kistler. And the the this over. Oh, wow. As soon as this switch saw that output, it rolled the game hot. We looked at these switches and actually we held them off for a minute because this one wasn't immediately probably started doing electrical work. That switch, which right. was the first one that started doing electrical And it was being that's synchronized awesome. with the output of the first one. And that's using as a reference. Can you go get some lessons? Right across that contact is where they're doing the parallel electrical. Well, this is in. 600 PW now is available, all right, and it allows enough power for these to close in. And that decision making was done by this box. So this guy is told by R.L. Kistler in the beginning, you've got two generator sets, 300 and 600. You've got three switches. They probably are having, well, we made arbitrarily made it, 300 PW, 300 PW, 300 PW, make a math fun, all right? That's how much power is going through these. If they're all running behind me, then all these can be hot. If they're not all running, then we have to make some decisions about load shedding. That's what this guy does. He does it based on the numbers it's told by our system. In the beginning, at, at, at startup time, the Kistler tech says, I've got two gen sets that are this big, and I've got load coming on, 300, 300, and then going off, same thing, different buckets, right? If we lose the generator set, let's take the, uh, I don't know, we'll take the 300 offline. Right. Might have been a failure, might have been they just changed the oil. I don't know. All right. I've got 300, 600 kW available, right? This guy's still operational. That means this guy knows I've got 600 available. You've told me that I need three, three, and three. That means 
this guy's always going to stay hot. I can keep him hot too. It did, however, send a signal to this box to drive it to a, this contact into a middle position. This thing is essentially off, right? But it means the load is not being fed. I haven't overloaded the others. I still have three and three. I've still got redundancy of power, all right? That's really the functionality of this box to do that sort of thing. Permission to come on, get rid of it if you need to. And then we'll turn it back up again, put it back in auto. All right, that 300 is going to synchronize with the output of the six. Right, it's contactor. It'll close back in, bang. System controller will recognize it. Say, I've got 300 back again. It should close that system back in. There we go. All right. Again, that is communicate with the communicate RS45 digital loop. There's a digital data loop that goes from here to the boards, just like it on the generators that you can see them playing around here. They're all the same boards. All right. What's neat is even if I cut the communication to this, all right. Can the BMS talk to it? Yes. The B if you're going to BMS, it would talk to this. I would land that here, and we will. That's what we do for BMS. Right. Oh, okay. <laughs> then, you, then you know what? We, this was developed before people like you were really popular. Yeah. So it, frankly, you know, you can do a lot of what we're doing yeah. here, right? But we'll give you the open architecture, whatever signals you want. You want to know what temperatures are, you want shutdowns, whatever. But your BMS would land here. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> but if the communication was cut here, what's neat is the generators are already communicating. They can, they're going to parallel on their own. They're going to say, actually, I could probably do it. Where we are in, um, let's go back to, you want to bring back utility? We're rolling back in. Because the generators are digitally communicating, all right, if they lose, they can't talk to this guy anymore. They're going to look at each other and say, what happened? What are we going to do? What are we going to do? We'll wait a second or two, all right? Then they'll say, well, I guess we better close the bus. And they will. But they can decide, okay, you're going to go first, then me, or vice versa. If one has to go, then the other one uses it. All right, so now we can do that. Mike, I'm going to, I'm going to turn this off. All right, now we oh, let's clean this so we can see it. We're going to get a loss of communication signal. All right. All right, now utility, if you take utility out. You're going to kill utility. Even though those generators have, are not talking to this, we've lost comps. Now they're arguing. It's like, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? We better start. <coughs> okay, you start, you close, you close, and I'll close. So what's the order? What gets uh, the order? Let's see, you know, is it... I think at the, at the beginning, you, we actually, the, the tech doesn't you arbitrarily say, if this happens, this is number one. Early. Yeah. Yeah, so Gen 1 and Gen 2 are defined in software, and now there's a dead bus arbitration line between Gen 1 and Gen 2. So, even in a comms failure mode, I have one of those two gens must start. So, even still, one of those could be in a failure state, I can still make the bus hot, and then my subsequent units can still synchronize and close in. So again, you've got, you've got layers of redundancy, both in the, the physical generation platform and the control platform as well, and in the hardware, obviously, itself. So the, that's the level number one of redundancy here. The level number two is, we've had a terrible catastrophic failure. This line has got, a backhoe has cut the lines to the generator set, two wire starts are down, everything. Total manual start. Can we bring it back. Are we back on utility 100%? Oops, not we yet. are back on, not yet. Okay, there we go. All right, so now it's a real bad day. Right. Human beings are going to walk up to the generator set. You could, sir. All right, you're the facilities manager. Here, wait a second. Let's make it really good. Oh, yeah, put that on. Off, off. Right, everything's, everything is dead. Here. This is dead. Right? I'm going to make